Now that we know about acids and bases, we need to figure out how do we know if something's acidic or basic if we don't know the formula, right? If you're given an unknown liquid and you're told it could be acidic, it could be basic, how do you figure out? Well, uh, this is a question that first came up, as you can imagine, more than 150 years ago. Scientists wanted to know uh, if I have something and I want to know if it's acidic or basic, how do I tell, right? So one of the things that chemists had learned um, and that actually people had known for quite a while is that certain plants, um, vegetables, flowers, lichens, lichen is like the moss that lives on trees, certain plants uh, were colorful, but under certain circumstances, like if you mixed them with other things, uh, those colors would change. Uh, one of the ones that was uh, that does this really well, and you can try this yourself if you have any red cabbage hanging around. I don't know too many people who like red cabbage, but uh, if you have red cabbage around, if you go to the grocery store and you grab some red cabbage and you blend up a couple of leaves from red cabbage with some water uh, and then strain out all the gross solid stuff, you end up with a solution. Um, it'd be kind of sort of like a purplish color, uh, but it will change color in the presence of acids or bases. Um, there are a lot of plants that have stuff in them that, that do this. One of the mixtures that scientists came up with was called litmus. Litmus was made from a mixture of compounds found in tree lichens. And the neat thing about litmus was that if you put it in acid, it would turn red. And if you put it in base, it would turn blue. Pretty neat. So scientists could use litmus, they would put it on uh, pieces of absorbent paper and they'd make some that were red uh, that had already been treated with acid and then if you put that in base it would turn blue and they'd made some that were blue which were already true that had been the uh, litmus was already treated with base and they put that in acid and it would turn red and so they could use that paper they could use litmus paper to figure out if something was acidic or basic great idea but one of the problems is it didn't tell you how acidic or basic it was right not all acids are the same Hydrochloric acid, sulfuric acid, those are really strong acids, right? Compared to something like acetic acid, which is the acid in vinegar or carbonic acid in your soda, not quite as strong. And so how can we figure out how, how relatively strong an acid is or a base is? Uh, for that, we need something a little bit more. Well, chemists spent a lot of time finding lots and lots of different compounds that would change color under different amounts of acidity or basicity. All of these substances together collectively are called indicators because they indicate if something is an acid or a base and really good indicators will tell you how acidic or how basic they are. Now there is one that was invented in about 1932, 1933 or so called a universal indicator. It's actually a mixture of a whole bunch of those other compounds I was talking about and universal indicator will change a number of different colors depending on how acidic or how basic something is. So you can actually use it, that's why it's called universal, to do any solution. And you can have a pretty good idea of how acidic or how basic it is. We'll take a look at that and see what it looks like. This is a Petri dish with a little bit of water in it, just plain water. And this is my universal indicator solution. You'll notice it's kind of green. And uh, when I put it into water, and I mix it up a little bit, it stays green, okay? Remember that water uh, is considered to be neutral. It's neither acidic or basic. More on that in a minute. Uh, but the universal indicator, when it's in the presence of a neutral solution, stays green in color, okay? Now, if I take some acid, so I have a little bit of hydrochloric acid here. I'm going to add this acid to this neutral water solution that I have. Watch what happens to the indicator. That's pretty neat, huh? It turns bright red. Universal indicator changes to red when an acid is present, okay? Now, the more acidic it gets, the redder this solution will get um, and, and eventually it can get fairly dark red. Uh, but that's what we're looking for when, when we're in an acid solution. Uh, we're going to become slightly red. Now, let's take a look at what happens in base. So, we'll take another Petri dish. 
We'll put some more water in there. And we'll add our universal indicator. So again, inside water, universal indicator is green. Now the base that we're going to use is sodium hydroxide. Okay, sodium hydroxide, according to both uh, Arrhenius and Bronsted and Lowry, is basic, uh, according to Arrhenius, because of the OH ions. So we're going to add some of this and watch what happens. It changes to purple. Under basic conditions, universal indicator turns purple. Okay? Now, that's not the only two colors that we have. We can change these colors by changing the amount of acid. Now, we know that when an acid and a base interact, uh, we get a little bit of a, a cancellation, a neutralization that happens. Uh, some of the acid reacts to the base and they form water. So if I put a little bit of uh, acid into this solution, just a little bit, we can maybe get it to change to a slightly lighter color. And you can see where it goes in initially, it turns red pretty quick, but then as it spreads out, the blue color comes back. If I put enough in there, now it turns kind of a lightish blue-green color, right? So it's still not green. It's not the color of water uh, with the universal indicator, but it's getting, look at it, it's changing, even still it's changing to a lighter yellow now, okay? That means that the uh, there's a little bit more acid in there than there is base, because the base should be more blue or purple. Now, uh, if we want to use these colors, this is nice, we can say, oh, well, that's more red, and that's, a, well, that's useful to a point, but we want to be a little bit more clear and accurate about this, okay? If we're going to, if we're going to be uh, really complete about evaluating how acidic or basic something is, um, we're going to need something a little bit more standardized. So in order to really be more accurate about how acidic or basic something is, scientists developed something called the pH scale. So this is a way of measuring how acidic or how basic a solution is because it's related to the H plus hydrogen ion concentration in the solution, okay? How much H plus there is. Now it's a mathematical relationship and it's something called an, a negative logarithmic relationship. So that's not important. What's important for you to understand is that uh, the more H plus there is in your solution, the lower your pH will be. Think of it as an inverse proportional relationship, okay? So, what substances contain lots of H plus? Acids. The more H plus they have, the lower the pH will be. pH scale goes from zero to 14. That's it, okay? And water, because water is neutral, water is neither acidic nor basic. Actually, technically, water is both acidic and basic because a little bit of water will split into H plus and OH minus. So it contains both the hydroxide and the hydrogen ions, which makes it both basic and acidic. We have a word for that, it's called amphoteric. But because water has the same amounts of those, it's considered to be neutral. And so scientists decided that the pH scale for water, uh, water would fall right in the middle of that scale. And so water is seven, it has a pH of seven. Anything that is acidic would be lower than seven because more H plus means lower pH, right? And anything with less H plus than water would be more basic, would have a higher pH. Again, that's that inverse relationship. So pH of acids is below seven, pH of bases is above seven, and pH of water or anything neutral is right at seven. Now we can use the indicator, the universal indicator, to figure out approximately what the pH of a solution is. Let's take a look at how that works. So here I've got another Petri dish full of water, and here you see is the universal pH color and uh, pH scale for, for universal indicator. And uh, everything from red down here where there are acids to uh, purple up here where there are bases. We already saw the extremes, the red and the blue. We also saw something that was about yellow. Uh, but let's just take a look at how we use that. Here's my water. I'm going to add a little bit of uh, HCl to this. Oh, I forgot to add my universal indicator. So let me add my universal indicator. Okay. There's my acidic solution. 
Okay, so my acidic solution is very red. I look down here at about pH of two or three. Okay, as I add to that some base, see initially it turns purple, but then as the reaction between the acid and base, oh, I think I added enough to overcome it. There's a base, okay? And so you'll see that this is now in the 12 or 13, maybe even close to 14 range um, for pH there. And then anything in between, depending on what the solution is or depending on how much H plus there might be uh, in the solution, if I neutralize a little of this base, we'll see if we can get it to a color that's a little bit different here. You can see it's getting a little lighter, a little bit more blue. Let's see what we get here. A little bit lighter. There we go. Kind of a yellowish orange color here, maybe around six. That looks pretty much like at a pH of six. All right, and if we were to go back to just plain water, we know that water should be a nice pretty green color because water is neutral. So just a, a little bit of water here, a little bit of universal indicator in there, and we get that green color that indicates a pH of seven. So we can use universal indicator to come up with an approximate pH. There are better ways. There are pH meters uh, that will measure the pH based on electrical conductivity of the solution all of that. Uh, but this is a nice handy way to figure out how acidic or basic something is just based on its color.